How you doing for cash? You good? Starting to get a little tight. I mean, there's work if you want it. Seven years. Time flies, don't it? Why were you gone for so long, Michael? Come back, Michael. It's not like it was before. It's different now. I got something big in the works that's almost there. I want you to head up that operation for me. What about Cuz? Cuz? The way things are going, he's digging his own grave real fast. I'm tired of shit. I'm tired of it, man. I'm telling you. Fucking no. disrespects me, disrespects the guys, makes money, hand over fist on me. You ever feel like you were just a, a shell of what you once were in your finest moment? But what if I just walk out? What if I walk away, huh? Do I gotta remind you of who you really are? The job is going down. It's happening. The police not getting it. We are. Saint Michael, the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be your protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him. We humbly pray. O Prince of the Heavenly Host. It speaks to what a good story is. It's like you're not really bogged down with too much elements going on, with too much distractions and fluff. There's just enough violence, there's just enough love, there's just enough brotherhood and mystery. Hello, Tom Levecchia here with the latest edition of the New Theory Podcast. Today, we have a very special guest, kind of a Jersey, South Philly, slash Bucks County edition of the podcast, uh, although this is national and international, we actually have about 20% of our audiences overseas, but mostly in the U.S. Today, I present to you Adam Ratcliffe, uh, the lead and the producer of St. Michael and the City. So by the time you watch this, it'll be out. I'm going to put a link below. Adam Ratcliffe, welcome to New Theory Podcast. How are you doing today? Good. How are you doing, Tom? Thanks for having me, man. I am well. So I'm excited to talk to you. Um, for many reasons, I want to talk about the business of indie movies. I want to talk about you as an actor. I want to talk about you having the balls to put your film together. So let's start off with, you know, we got a lot of people from South Philly, Trenton area, uh, where the base of St. Michael the City uh, is is filmed and from. But first, let's start off with what is St. Michael in the City? And tell us about the movie. Uh, the movie is 100% uh, throwback. I was speaking with the staff beforehand. Um, it is... Almost uh, '90s esque, uh, 2000, early 2000s. It's it's kind of, if to use LA terms, State of Grace meets the movie The Town. Yes. Um, it's a, a brainchild of the Kevin Interdonato, uh, good friend of mine who I auditioned for many years ago for an indie film called Blue Collar Boys. Nice. I didn't wind up making the cut, but um, I don't know. It's just like. House of Mirrors with Kevin and I, we saw each other in yeah. ourselves. So nice. we stayed friends. That was in 2008. And, and um, I did a film with Brian O'Harrillan and Brian kind of put it in my ear that eventually I need to work with Kevin because he had also worked with Kevin. Nice. And uh, the, the way the story went was I, I did a documentary on Tom Sizemore, who we also had in common, yeah. small business, right? Yeah. And, Ke and Kevin hit me up and said, I have this script see if you can put it out there. And I said, well, okay, I'll read it. And um, I read it in, in one night. It was it was Kevin to a T. It was very, very, uh, the dialogue was very succinct. It was not um, long and fluffy. It was like straight to the point. So State of Grace meets the town is the best way to describe it. Uh, kid grows up in a broken home in the town of Trenton. Uh, without any giveaways, he is surrounded by people of like path and mind and um, winds up being put away for somebody else's crime. And then he has to infiltrate the town eight years later um, as somebody else. Yeah, I, that's why watching it, I thought it was really interesting, kind of the arc of the character. And um, it's like kind of a, a dichotomy of this character. And I think a lot of people from the Jersey and from the Northeast even will kind of relate because whether you are that person or you relate to that person who you got to wear a lot of different hats, right? Yeah. You could got to be kind of like a street guy sometimes in that life, right? But then you also want to be a good person, which is morally conflicts. Um, but there's a huge amount of 
kind of hometown pride. You know, you could have filmed that in North End Boston. You could have filmed that in Brooklyn. You could have filmed that pretty much anywhere. Why did you adapt it locally to Trenton? Uh, well, it was kind of untapped. And having done a couple uh, guerrilla style films in Philadelphia yeah. uh, without, without you know, any of the red tape, um, it's hard to pull off. To, to, to not get in trouble, right? Yeah. To shoot in Philadelphia without permits and, and SAG calling you because jealous actors weren't hired on your indie film or your, your short film, right? So Trenton is unexplored. Um, it looks like a little bit of a city. Um, it's gritty. It was basically timely for everything that we wanted this to tell. And um, Kevin is obviously a Jersey guy, as was the director, Jeff Stewart. Yes. He was from Trenton, um, born and raised. So, and it's close to where I'm from, Bucks County, Pennsylvania. Yes. On um, the other side of the bridge. So, I, I, I really, you know, being a commuter back and forth to New York City for many years after I lived in New York for six years, um, I love the bridge, man. The bridge is all enticing. It's, yeah. it's got like a real soul to it, right? It's got, you know, Trenton makes, the world takes. Um, it pops in the film. Uh, I like that. And I, I can't really uh, speak to the, the history of Trenton because no. I'm not that educated no. on it. I'm no. more educated on Philly, but it worked for the film 100%. Kind of back alleyways, yeah. dark, gritty. And uh, when the violence takes place and it goes down, it, it, it pops off perfectly. Definitely a very uh, violent movie. So, but you could took a little bit. It's like Bastard Sons, and Kevin was on the pod as well. Kevin did not shout out to Kevin. And Bastard Sons was his adaptation, more of a North Jersey gritty movie. But your film fit South Jersey. South Jersey's a little different for those people not from here. South Jersey's a little different. South Philly's a little different, a little gritty, some ways grimy in some ways, especially in the underworld. But it's not the typical like OC mob movie. Like his was a little different than The Sopranos. And yours is totally different from any other organized movie I saw, or even shall I say a cop tinged movie. Um, you know, Give me kind of the strategy behind that from the creative side. The, I'm a writer. Yeah. Okay. I wrote a screenplay called The Philly Kid. It was picked, picked up by Warner Brothers. Um, I left Los Angeles and I left the script with my roommate in LA. He he had it picked up by Warner Brothers. The reason I say that is because I, I know what good writing is. Yeah. Okay. Um, it was made for three mil, made five million um, nice. via streaming. Kevin nice. wrote this as a producer. He has a mind of a producer. Okay. So he. When we say like, um, ask me the question again. No, so like, just like, it's much different than traditional kind of Sopranos and organized crime movies. So give us kind of like the thought process and how how you made it different and why. Well, I th I think the love story that is there, yeah, it, it really endears you to who Michael is, yeah, and. The fact that there's such chemistry between Michael and Cuz, the characters of Cuz. Yeah. And he genuine Michael genuinely loves these people. Yeah. Right? And the um, authenticity of the town itself. It is a small city. Yes. So it plays that way on screen. So when I say there's there, there could potentially, I don't have a crystal ball and I've been around a long time to know what's a good script and what could translate to film. When I say it could have a really strong following I, I see a little bit of boondock saints type of thing um because there's such heart kevin made sure not to tell too much about these characters but the love is always evident you know mm. what i mean yeah and that's to me what, what the story keeps driving it, it really goes by very quickly and that's the speaks to what a good story is it's like you're not really bogged down with too much elements going on with too much distractions and fluff um there's just enough violence. There's just enough love. There's just enough brotherhood and mystery. You know what I mean? It was like a hard that. character to play, Michael, because you're wearing a lot of different hats. Yeah, he's definitely a complex character. Tell us about Michael. Who is he as a character? And uh, why was it kind of easy or difficult to play him? Uh, Michael is, uh, I, I believe, an orphan. Um, he's somebody that... W Kevin kind of speaks to being the last of the white boys in, a, in an urban city. Yeah. Um, there's that. I mean, there's, 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 you, know, you speak a certain way when, when you grow up that way. But at the same time, he has scruples, you know, whereas cuz there's a total dichotomy there. Yeah. And, and, and it, 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 um, 
Michael will do for his brothers, but he 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 has more integrity and um, he has to hold his cards close to his chest to survive what he's what he's going through. But mm. there's he's he's very caught up in in a lot of turmoil in making the decisions that he has to make in order to uh, in order to survive not only for himself and for his soul, but because. It, He's torn between the love of his life and yeah. and these people that have graduated to felonies. You know they were they were kind of rough neck kids, but now they're now they're full on murderers, if you will. Um, well, that's one of the areas that I felt that I think is going to resonate with somebody like from Brooklyn, Bronx, uh, any any kind of like inner city or city where like it grew up in a certain way. And then fast forward 10, 15, 20 years later, and then just a neighbor, like you kind of change in a good way, and if hopefully people changed in a good way, but the neighborhood kind of got worse. Like the neighborhood that you go back to, to visit your Nona or, you know, visit your grandmother or just go back to your old neighborhood haunts. And that neighborhood just like shifted and changed and not for the better. And that's kind of what we saw in St. Michael of the city. How important was it for you to kind of highlight the, the change of the neighborhood as well. Well, I think that that's very relevant today. I mean, it's the evolution of, of what we're seeing. You know, people talk about gentrification. Yeah. I spend time in North Philly. You know, I do side jobs where I'll be do delivering DoorDash from time to time. Yeah. From, if the strike really killed actors yeah, who were making absolutely. a living. Um, so that's a very timely scenario that we we're seeing today. Um, so it, it, this guy does evolve and he, it happens because he does time for somebody else's crime and he finds not only does he have integrity he's good at what he you know he's disciplined and it's uh it's just astonishing to him the chemistry and i i, I just find that to be universal you know if you and i were friends we weren't but if we were friends at like seven years old yeah. and we got in fist fights you know it's yeah. like Nine times out of ten, at twenty-five, the human condition, we're probably going to have the same exact chemistry yeah. all those years later. But one of us, you know, nine times out of ten is going to be either worse or better. You know, yeah, it's like yeah, yeah. so. T it's a universal story, and uh, it's very human. And the one thing that people are writing about it, and you know, I'm only seeing a couple articles, but it's very authentic. Yeah, it's very, very real to life, and that that is a tribute to the writing. The writing is very human. Yeah. You know. Now, we're going to put a link to the movie. So, obviously, check it out. It, uh, you know, there's going to be on Amazon and, and whatever platform it's on. We'll put a link below. But also, you went all in on this. I mean, like, talking about the business end, you secured the capital, got the lead role. Obviously, you got the cast together. You directed it. You know, Jeff uh, Stewart directed it. But you obviously were involved. Like you went from being a working actor, then the strike comes, and then you kind of go all in on this yeah. movie. Like some people would say, you're nuts, right? Which, which you might be. But yeah. my point being is, give us the thought process. You, you know, give us the machinations of it. So, uh, thank you for putting me on the spot. I'm, I, 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 my, I do have sleepless nights. Yeah. It's not only because I'm a middle aged man, yeah. but it's because I'm on the hook for a lot of capital. Yeah, so there thank you. you. And the, the, the most interesting thing about it is, and I, I, I would be remiss if I didn't thank the people from my hometown because they've been, following, yeah. they've been following my journey. Yeah. And I have to thank just the way that I came up as an athlete because yeah. I also would be remiss if I didn't yeah. mention the fact that I was kind of this hometown boy who was. Yeah who excelled at sports and people really helped me out along the way because I came from a broken home. I, you know, I met my uncle from Graterford prison when I was like six, seven years uh -huh. old and the dude did 10 years for, you know, for some pretty, some pretty heavy stuff. And yeah. he was a, he was a good old boy. He was tough. Yeah. He, he had his own demons and addictions and he kicked them and he died of cancer. So mm. like I come from, I come from warriors yeah. and, intelligent people too because yeah. i'm from the bar you yeah. know and, and, I, and i saw all sorts of walks of life so yeah. I, I learned to be this chameleon businessman yeah as a kid my father's a, a um a boss his father was a boss yeah uh before him he served in world war ii wow. my brother's a boss takes dents out of cars big business right so you just kind of have that evolution in business when you grow up around people of all walks of life you got that, it. that you know teach you pull and shit yeah you know? so um, at the end of the day, 
I did a, I did a documentary during COVID. Okay. And I think when I mentioned the Philly kid, that kind of sparked an energy within me that I can write something that people will put real money into. Yeah. And then it just one thing led to another and it snowballed that Adam's not only uh, a one dimensional person, he's an yeah. actor who can who can go out and play music. He yeah. can, he can um, entice a crowd to sing along and and he just so happens to know how to put a finance package together with a yeah. story that will sell. Yeah. And basically I did a documentary on Tom Sizemore, the actor who yes. passed away. I documented mm-hmm. about eighty hours of footage of, of the end of his life. Wow. Um, to make it really a, sh- a long story short, Kevin and I both worked with him on, on indie films. Kevin reached out to me because of the, of the fact that I was able to raise the capital from Bucks County for the documentary. And during COVID, documentary was all the rage. Correct. They were all the rage. Yeah. So um, I met Tom. I pitched him another script that I had wrote called The Subway Sun. It's a, okay. it's a street performer yeah. script that I wrote because I met Mark McGraw, Tim McGraw's brother. Oh, wow. On the New Jersey Transit heading to an audition for SVU. That's cool. We get off at Penn Station. He hands me his card. It says McGraw on it. I said, like, Tim, I'm a country bumpkin, but played football in the city of Philadelphia, right? So, like, as soon as he said Tim McGraw, I was like, no way. That's awesome. And he was just an actor, commercial actor at the time. He basically gave me this card, and we stayed friends. Uh, He told me the story about Tim. And from that moment on, I was like, okay, this is the next Philly kid. This is the next thing that I'm going to write to eventually get made. Tim had read it. Um, the moral of the story with that is he knows the na- his name is what it's worth. I changed it to what if Hank Williams Jr. didn't know Hank Williams Sr. was his father. Because Tim mm. didn't know Tug McGraw was yeah, yeah. the World Series pitcher for the Phillies. Yeah, yeah. So I'm a story guy. Yeah. When I hear stories and... and you know, you read enough plays in, a, in an acting class yeah. with Vincent D'Onofrio, you start to kind of like become so, a business yeah. mind yeah. person. Yeah. So at the end of the day, Kevin knew that about me, and I didn't know Kevin was a writer. Yeah. So that's how it happened. I, I, I started to really put myself out there as somebody that could get a project out of the mud and, and onto a set. Which is not easy. It's not easy, but it, it it's a tribute to my town and the fact that they understand um, the opportunity in streaming. You know, and, and um, it's a, it's just like anything else. Like yeah. Dana White, take the risk. You, the, what you become, what you think. Well, I want to I want to touch on that because you wrote a good point. Because the model is changing to where whether you're you know a theater release or straight to VOD, video on demand, you're kind of consistent with where the model's going, which is huge, right? So some foresight. But then you know you you again you raise the money, you produce it, you know did everything. My question is for those that are watching that are maybe thinking of raising money for a project, whether it be for a business, whether it be for a movie, whether it be an endeavor they're doing, what advice do you have for people who are out there trying to raise money? Uh, For me, there's really no secret to it and and it's not rocket science. It's just be yourself. And, um, you know, it's like I just taught at Ryder University because of the strike. That's right? awesome. And, and, and a lot of the students are like, hey, how did you get your website to be yeah. so awesome, man? Yeah. And I'm like, well, I spent 20 years trying to get professional work. And yeah. now, now I have a website. I just yeah. found a designer that can yeah. actually upload it. Correct. I don't know how to do that. Yeah. But I hired somebody. So it's Correct. a matter of putting in the footwork and doing the research, just like anything else. Yeah. You open a car wash, you're going to find out about how, to, how the equipment works or you're going to go to a convention, right? Yeah. I spent years in an acting class, man, with one of the biggest actors in New York City. Vincent D'Onofrio was yeah. my teacher. That's awesome. Um, so I'm just kind of a sponge and, and a very chameleon type of person, always was. And the more sober I am, which I'm 25 years sober, kid yeah. from the bar, right? Um, so I, it's just like the awakening continues to happen. And you learn about finance packages you learn about how to how to sum it up for people who are business people and i yeah. and i've always been around business people bucks county pennsylvania is one of the most affluent places yeah. in the country yeah. and i kind of was raised by other people's parents and they were all very successful people um and you, you get enough visual on you you get enough television appearances people start to realize this kid must know something right yeah um so that's kind of how it happened and once once i got the finance package God bless you, Mark Zuckerberg. Zuckerberg. Um, I just put it out there, man, and one thing led to another. It started trending. And the, it started trending. Yeah, that's amazing because just again, you know, I, I, you know, you and I chat off camera, 
and just you're, you're very like humble laid back guy and the fact that you raised the money you raised is is in its own self a story so want to talk a little bit about your acting you've worked with a lot of big actors and actresses um you know when i looked you up like your imdb is super long uh give us some of the roles that you're probably most proud of or people may know of you or at least the shows you were on um, the only role, believe it or not, thus far where I've actually gotten foreign like inboxes on Instagram, you know, and it's funny, I was I was uh, reluctant to even get on Instagram. I'm yeah. the opposite of somebody who needs that click, and uh, now there's threads and all this stuff. Like yeah. I'm just such a caveman when it comes to these <laughs> things, but yeah. I understand the importance of them. But um, the invasion is getting a lot of attention, man. It, it, uh, it took me 20 years and I got a recurring and that's awesome the story goes it's a 200 million dollar series from the makers of the Martian and X-Men that's amazing um, uh, I forget the producer's name but it's, it's a big time producer yeah um, and they shut down in the middle of the first episode I had three episodes on this huge 200 million dollar series and it was the first series they shut down during COVID because we were in uh, Westchester, New York. Wow. So I'm playing this National Guardsman in this alien series, right? Yeah. And killing it. Like, happy, in my element. Like, I'm nervous when I play music yeah, for yeah. people. people. Yeah. When I can create a character, I'm Different not ball nervous. Game. It's yeah. like sport for me. Yeah. Um, so the long of the short is they bring in the real National Guard to actually sanction and, and, and quarantine the town of Westchester. Because if you remember, it was where COVID broke out the yes, most in the beginning. Yes. So, so I had two more episodes to shoot, and it took me 20 years to get a recurring character, and they shut it down mm. for like eight months. Wow. Um, but... They wound up bringing it back because they had so much money, and I did the bubble like the NBA did. I was yeah. in a hotel room for 23 hours a day, yeah. people bringing you food, and uh, we nailed it. Everybody gained weight, so our characters looked a little bit different. <laughs> yeah. But like, there were famous people in this hotel room with yeah. me. Um, Catherine Erb was one of them. Yeah, yeah. She was really struggling, uh, and I'm just happy to be there. But it was it was hard, man. The the adoration i got which i'm not really good at receiving like i'm working on that yeah. was a guy from canada he okay. reached out to me on on instagram and he said hey man i'm taking an acting class and i wanted you to know that your part was spot on in invasion nice it really affected me and I, I am actually a military guy who's yeah. now a cop in canada and i'm taking an acting class he said you were right on that's amazing and i you know as my brother's big businessman and I, I send it on to my family and it's like i'm just the guy that like wants my family to be proud of me. So when That's somebody cool. like that reaches out in another part of the world, it's <laughs> it's very humbling. Wow. So you also um, mentioned you're 25 years sober. What was, you know, what was that journey like? And how did you go from obviously having addiction to uh, a form of recovery? I was in my fourth college. I was nearly 22 years old. Um, I spent about 11 months. I. It started in uh, the dorms, and I'm in my fourth college yeah. playing Division One, Division One rugby. Oh, wow. So I, I had this whole identity crisis with football. I was a scholarship winner to Westchester University, Pennsylvania, nice. and I was a linebacker, and um, just kind of losing myself. And, and, and I didn't relate to the, for lack of better terms, the meathead yeah. uh, society anymore. Um, yeah. And I just was losing that type of pers persona. Yeah. And I, had, I was already an artist, I already did plays, I already sang, and I just yeah. kind of was, between you, me, and the tree, smoking pot in between my freshman year of college and my senior year of high school. So I became kind of a hippie, right? Yeah. So then it, when I turned 21, it led to liquor. And I am from a family of, of people who are could be considered professional drinkers. Yeah, yeah. Good old boys, they're really good, yeah. they lots of integrity. And college also massive too, like, you know, like like if you're an alcoholic in college, it gets masked. 100%. And, but, but for me, it was, I kept bouncing from school to school and I was in this place of like, I'm almost a man. Whereas like most of the kids in the dorm were like 18, 19, yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm 21 yeah. and I'm still struggling with the booze. And when I graduated to liquor on my 21st birthday, I slept in a back alleyway outside of the rugby bar in the Ooh. snow, face down. Mm, it's not good. And um, I had DTs. I, I actually forgot my walk home to my dorm room. And I woke up in my dorm bed 
with blood on my head with my pants that I just bought that night and um, sought out a counselor by myself, you know, God doing for me what I couldn't do for myself. And uh, she told me I was lucky to be alive. And for the first time, it kind of hit me between the eyes that what I was doing to myself wasn't like a fantasy. It was it was real. Yeah. And there was some sort of uh, what they call the craving, the phenomenon of craving happening within me. Yeah. That wasn't passing me by where I wouldn't be in my fourth college, including Bucks County Community College for a week uh, at 21, living in the dorms with. Yeah, but so like, and I hate to say this, but when you hear stories of addiction, it usually does start around that age, but it transcends that. So you had to have a certain level of maturity to pump the brakes in college. My mother really educated herself because her father was this huge, talented, off-Broadway actor. Her mother was Canada's top model at 18. Cool. Six one, she was, and she she was yeah. she was wild. But they were they were like I caught my grandfather drinking the rubbing alcohol I used to put Oof. before there were oxy pads. Remember in the eighties, yeah. And uh, so that's the type of you know I was bombarded with both sides of it. So when I say I graduated to liquor, it was a different type of blackout. I was always a blackout drinker, but yeah. this was like talking to people and having long engaged conversations at the university rugby bar. And then seeing them in the in the quad, and then being yeah. like, "Hey, man, how's your brother? How's your you know?" And I'm yeah. like, I have no idea who they were. Yeah, so it was yeah. scary. Yeah, you know. And um, and then there was a little bit of like blood, puke, like the dark stuff, you know. Yeah. And, and uh, I hate to be so graphic, no, no. but at the end of the day, it was um, I started calling the hotline for yeah. for some Good for you, man. And it took about 10 months, but I was playing rugby and, yeah. and I, I had a guy take me under his wing who I call a sponsor and um, I did the next right thing. 24 years later, I'm still Couple trying less. to do it, you know, what's in front of me. And uh, it's been a, a wild ride, but it's I've Good for touched you. a life beyond my wildest dreams because of my sobriety and I'll never, I'll never take that for granted. I know I'm asking you for a lot of advice this podcast, but what advice do you have somebody who is just struggling who, you know, what needs that strength in order to get to recovery? What's some advice? The most amazing thing, um, and a guy named Sam Heckle, God rest his soul, big meeting in the sky. Uh, one of my, one of my, uh, angels in the process, he said to me, uh, you don't have to live that way. No. And it was like mind blowing. Yeah. And I'm getting a little heavy here, but it's, it's true. Like okay. for somebody who is in the depth of their addiction, it's like a, it's like a, it's, what's the word I'm looking for? It's like the most re- big revelation that you'll have. It's like an explosion. Yeah. For me, it was like, I don't have to live this way. You know, yeah. for me, my name Ratcliffe was attached to, dude, you got to trudge this road yeah. of warrior alcohol. Suck it up. Suck it up. Yeah. You know, tear in my beer. Like I thought that yeah. was my existence. Yeah. And, I, and when somebody told me that was bigger than me, in the country of Bumpkin, more than me, because it was out west, yeah. western PA, the Christmas tree capital of the world, they right. call it. And, and the guy told me, and I latched on to him and another guy, and um, one day at a time, man, I, what I believed was they were living some sort of joy that I didn't experience as a, as a young man at that yeah. point. And I was such a f- sensitive person. I wasn't somebody that gotten arrested. I was no. I was very lucky to not have gotten arrested. And I the only time I called people out to fight was when I drank twenty four uh, shots of mezcal at yeah. the rugby bar my my twenty first and I slept in an alleyway right. Yeah. So I was a, not a violent person either. I did get in a few fights, but I was a peaceful, just very melancholy, very depressed drunk. No. Yeah. And I was tired of that. Because my, you know, it started at like 13, 14. And it, like, I, I got on stage drunk at 14. Wow. In some of my big, biggest plays in yeah. my teenage years. So I was somebody that could kind of function doing it. And like I said, the more I graduated to heavier stuff, then I was no longer functioning and getting out of my freshman year. How, how did you, um, and I don't want to stereotype, but you kind of went from being the big, you know, kind of rugby, football kind of, you know, we had the archetype in high school, right? The, the jock, if you will, to kind of m- m- uh, migrate over to become a creative, an actor, a singer. Well, that, How did that transition happen? So that was that happened before I even got to that school out in Western Pennsylvania. Um, I was a theater major. Yeah. And it, it blew people's minds. Interesting. But, um, 
I, I they call it the Patriot Players at my yeah. high school. Justin Guarini's a good friend of mine. He was a Patriot player. Yeah. Pink, she's from my hometown. Cool. Um, so it's, it's a very, very artistic town. Yeah. Um, and it wasn't something that, like, unbeknownst to me, once I started doing it, that was going to be looked down upon. It was actually the opposite. Yeah. So I got that bug, that theater stage bug, in my early teens. Even younger, like I, you know, I was doing. My grandfather taught me some Broadway shows, and I was doing, you know, plays in in, in elementary school. But yeah. when it got serious, I played Conrad Birdie. And that's cool. the play. Like I, I sneak beers from yeah. my dad's bar, and like <laughs> we, we, we would open with the old folks' home yeah. every every uh, spring, and they had no idea I was drunk. No yeah. idea. Like, but but the the moral of the story is, it was always there. Kind of hand in hand, I was like the high school musical guy before that even existed, right? Interesting. Um, when I got sober, I fully embraced it because I figured if a guy like me who just thought that I was destined to, you know, be drinking yingling at 75 years old watching the, the Eagles and could get sober at his fourth college with 12 credits to his name, then, then he can probably do anything. You know, there's, yeah. there's probably... Um, a greater existence that that was if i was open enough for it to happen yeah waiting for me um so i just kind of i surrendered to to the to the want yeah but what really happened was theater major didn't want to do it didn't want to design sets yeah i became a communications person so yeah. radio production nice um telling the news i worked for the the st- school news i actually that's cool reported on the our rugby team that took fourth in the country there you go my internship was at NBC 10 in Philadelphia. And when cool. I saw the law and order poster on the wall, my advisor came and she said, they might want to hire you here, like to be an Eagles reporter. Right. Yeah. I said, well, that's what I want to do. Nice. And that, the, the, the more, the longer, the short, and this will blow your mind. I met a guy in Doylestown in the program whose daughter was on Broadway in gypsy. She was baby Louise in gypsy. She was Bernadette Peter's daughter. Oh, wow. She wound up marrying Jeremy Allen White from The Bear. Yeah. Her name's Addison Timlin. I love her. Um, but it was like God doing for me, again, what I couldn't do for myself. This guy was an actor. His daughter was a professional actress who was making a living. Yeah. I wind up kind of transitioning from Philadelphia to living with this family because of this sober guy that's daughter was like in the whole New York scene. Scene, yeah. So that's how my story, I got very lucky. And it was the first, I felt like it was the first time that I didn't have to necessarily bang my head against the wall to get lucky at something. Yeah. It was just, again, sobriety, listening, paying attention to what's happening. And this guy saying, don't move to LA, check yeah. out New York. Jack wow. Nicholson sitting in the seat in front of me in New York City. When I went to see this little girl on Broadway, wow. I'm like, Whoa, this is it for me. And, and that's awesome. And I, I did explore LA, but yeah. I never got that pulse that I got in New York City. Well, you, you, I believe that because you, you said earlier you're a true to yourself kind of guy. So, like, when you raise money, got to like kind of wear a few different masks. But with you, you're like, yeah, I'm going to try to raise money. I'm going to be myself unapologetically. But also in your career, you could have went to LA and stayed in LA. And who knows what you would have done. But the fact that you kind of stayed true seems to be a theme, which is, which is pretty cool. And it's nice to hear that. So tell us, uh, we're going to wrap up soon, but before we wrap up, I just want to talk a little bit about the movie. I mean, I, I, I'm excited. Uh, I saw the screener. I'm not going to give anything away, but, um, you it's know. Pretty, it's a pretty cool trailer, too. I yeah, can't, we'll I get, can't wait to we're going to, we'll, we'll have Manny, or our guy, uh, stream that through in the beginning and um, put a, another short tidbit uh, uh, at the end just to kind of tease people. But give us kind of what to expect, you know, who, who should watch this and... Um, Tell us a little bit more about the uh, plot and, and the movie. The, I, again, I don't have a crystal ball. I, yeah. I, 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 you know, I don't want to uh, forecast what the expectation is because I'm just happy to be here, man, and live in awesome. the moment. And, and um, I told my dad recently, my dad's a good old boy, he's 70 years old. I posted a picture of him recently. I got like 300 likes. I'm like Nobody cares about me, but my dad, he's not even on social media. He's yeah. like, but anyway, the long of the short is that the um, the expectation that I have is slim to none because there's somebody else there's the universal is in, the universe is in charge and we did the work and and Get they it didn't there. bring us this far whatever it, he she it is to to have us fall on our faces in that's my awesome opinion. that's awesome and I, I told my dad and I said listen I might not have my moment for another five years 
I might be too tired to really embrace it, but I'm, I'm here, you know? And it's like something is circling. When I wanted it, and I read the book, Matthew McConaughey, Green Lights, and yeah. it said he wanted it too bad. Yeah. When I wanted it too bad, when I was young in the beginning, when Vincent D'Onofrio was breaking me down, just be vulnerable, Adam. Stop being a gorilla. Yeah. I needed that, and I needed to get my butt kicked. Now I'm a middle-aged man who might have a moment, yeah. you know, and it, it might propel me to another level. But yeah. Kevin's parents, to, to answer your question, loved St. Michael. Yeah. Liked Bastard Sons. Yeah. But loved St. Michael. There's a love story there. So yeah. it's anybody's guess as to who the demographic is, but it's a really good story. So, all right. So to, to maybe share Spill the Beans a little bit, um, I love I loved Bastards. I loved it. Kevin prepared me because my wife liked Bastards. My wife, you met her. She's 28. She's from Ecuador. <laughs> she, you know, like opposite of me. She dresses nice. She looks nice. Very on trend, very aesthetic. You, you met her. Um, so I'm like, babe, you know, we got to, I wouldn't watch a screener. And um, thinking it's a very Jersey based movie, but in the South Jersey based movie. She loved it. I loved it, but I, I expected to like it. I like yeah. that genre. It kind of has the tinge of being kind of a mob movie without, you know what I mean? I, yeah, that's, yeah, yeah. I don't want to give too much away, but that's what I liked about it as a crime thriller, crime drama. It's very hard to surprise anybody Correct. in film. And, that, and, that, and he and, pulled it off. Yeah, and that's why I um, I love Kevin's character and it reminded me of like how my brother was, who was crazy. But she loved it, and she's a 28-year-old female. So the cool thing is you're watching this. It's not The Sopranos. It's not stereotypical even though bastard sons was different this was different than that which i think it was pretty cool so so watch a movie uh drop a link below let us know what you thought of it um if you want to reach out um uh, uh to adam uh give give your thoughts tom a new theory i'll make sure he sees it or or post below i know he'll send the comments and uh, kevin i'm gonna give you with the closing remarks this was a fun one i, I know i'm gonna have you back I'm excited to watch the movie. By the time this comes out, the movie will either will be out soon or be out. So it'd be pretty cool for people to see that in real time. Um, but I'll give you the closing remarks. My closing remarks are one day at a time, one foot in front of the other, do the next right thing. And uh, if you are a believer, he didn't bring you this far to drop you on your face. Love it. Till next time, everybody. <laughs>